So yeah, hey David, uh, I'm talking to David from the Pixies, a uh, drummer with legendary band Pixies, uh, dialing him from Wales at the moment. And we had a little bit of a preamble to say hi to each other. Dave, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, Gavin. Hello, everyone. Uh, David Loving of the Pixies. Uh, I am in Wales right now at a studio called Rockfield, very famous for Queen and Rush. So uh, uh, it's a residential studio. I'm in a little apartment here, and I'm thinking, wow, could Giddy or Alex or Neil stayed in this place years ago? But <laughs> and I, I believe Rush were an inspiration for you as a drummer. Is that correct? They were, yeah. Younger, um, I stole my sister's uh, tape of it, you know, Farewell to Kings, and uh, it changed my way. I love their musicianship and everything since then. So. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure in years to come, people will be saying this is the studio that the Pixies recorded in. Uh, you're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be nice, yeah. And I've got to ask, actually, because you did mention that you're recording. That was something that I wanted to uh, to pry into a little bit, because uh, I know you've just released a new single, Human Crime, which is yes. awesome. Uh, and uh, by the sounds of it, you're recording now. So does that mean there might be a new album on the horizon? Well, actually, it's funny. We, we already recorded an album, which will be released in September, that we did in February in Vermont, in the United States. And uh, we came out here for the BBC Six Festival that happened in Cardiff. And it was a good impetus for here to come here to Rockfield because we've had two years off and we have plenty of material. So uh, we're just going to keep going. Nice. <laughs> so. Glad to hear it. I, I did read somewhere that there's over 40 songs written. Is that is that true? Yeah, yeah. If I look at my the email list of it, if I compile everything, yeah, there's, there, there's a lot, yes. Yeah. How do you choose from 40 songs? That must be a tough, because you have to throw away some songs you must love. We relegate everything to our producer, Tom Delgetti. Um, he's done our last, this is the third album that he's done with us. And if you just give everything to him, let him be the the the, the all-seeing eye and let him have his reign, if that's the way it works. Yeah. Make, make the brutal choices. Yeah, nice. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I want to ask you some stuff about uh, your role in the Pixies, but first, I think I uh, probably should talk about some of the upcoming shows that you're uh, you've got booked in for New Zealand. I, I'm getting yeah. my tickets tomorrow. Pretty excited to see oh, wonderful you guys again. Um, so yeah, can you tell us a little bit? I know that in Wellington, at least, you're going to be doing Come On Pilgrim and uh, Surfer Rosa. Can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect? Yes, um, we were there in, oh gosh, you know, right before the pandemic, we were there in March, mm. and we got to Auckland. Um, I know that we're doing shows in Auckland, Wellington, and Christchurch. Yes, yes. I think in Wellington and Christchurch, it will be the Surfer Rosa, uh, that show, and I think in Auckland, we'll be just going back and doing a regular show there, if I, if I, if I am right, if I have my uh, information going right, so, but looking forward to it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, people should go to both shows if they want to hear as much as possible. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's a good. Uh, that's a good selling point, Gavin. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, over here in New Zealand, we have not had any international bands for a couple of years, so I think people are pretty excited to to have a few people uh, come over and play. Yeah, yeah. And one thing I was kind of, kind of curious about because I'm guessing that was the same for the states as well. There was probably a dearth of of live shows for a while. Uh, did it feel different for you and the band coming back? Uh, and was the reaction a little bit different when he came back after after lockdown? Yeah, we've done, I can say since we, in the last, I would say, month, we've done one, two, three, four shows only. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. The last one was the BBC Six Festival a few days ago. And you can tell that people have been, have been, um, have been wanting to see bands. They're, yeah, they're, yeah. There's a little more fervor, kind of, and, uh, and... It's exciting. It's like it's 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 interesting to get back at it. It's like riding a bike, which is it's nice. We haven't really lost anything other than the, the stamina we're going to build up again. But, yes, but it's, it's but it's all good. All good. Nice. Yeah, I think uh, live shows is the one thing I've been missing most in, in the last couple of years, which yeah. is uh, not a, not a terrible problem to have. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I was talking to a friend of mine. He got in touch and mentioned that the Pixies were were coming over. Uh, and he was going to go, and I, I thought, well, that's kind of curious. You don't usually go to concerts. He said, no, my son is, that's his favorite band, so I'm going to take my son to see the Pixies. His son is 12, and I was yeah. you know, pretty pleased to hear that, that a 12-year-old has the Pixies as their favorite band. Um, are you aware of that when you see people come to your shows, just a, a wide range of different people? Very much so. Uh, it actually started in 2004 when we reformed. Mm. Uh, we, did a, uh, we played at Coachella in California. It was a big festival. And we had been absent for 
uh, what, 11, 12 years or something. Uh, we hadn't played. I just, I, th- I guess, bands around like Radiohead and Weezer and other things had kind of uh, translated us. Sure, uh, yes. Yeah. In that time. And it was a surreal thing because, you know, I didn't, I didn't know anything about this. And when we played, it was a sea of kids who probably, they weren't even born probably when we were initially a band. And now this is in 2004. And they were singing to all the words of the songs. And that was that was surreal. Now we're jumping ahead now with 2020. It's the same thing. It's generational. We're very fortunate uh, that we have generations. We, we, I think we're, I would call us the Grateful Dead of Alternative Rock. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah. the, the, age, the age group's there. It's, it's, it's amazing. And we're, we're very fortunate as a band. Yeah, so. absolutely. And kind of related to that, I wanted to ask... Um, I think obviously you've influenced a lot of bands that are around now and a lot of bands that happened in the 90s and famously Nirvana said the Smells Like Teen Spirit was influenced by the the Pixies. Um, so I think your legacy has kind of grown steadily over time. How does that make, yes. that must feel pretty amazing. How does that make you feel as a member of a band that's had that impact? Oh, it's interesting. People say, oh, you're a legend. It's like, oh, I mean, <laughs> I'm this metal detecting dirt nerd. <laughs> I mean, it yep. just, uh, it doesn't really equate. But I mean, it, it's 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 different being in the element. I mean, I mean, this is what I do, and it's it's nothing that special to me. Even though people may say that, but yes, yeah. it's just a different outlook that I have. But. Nice. And you mentioned metal detecting. Is that something that you fill your time with? Oh yeah, I've been I've been doing it since I was ten years old. I'm a huge metal detectorist. Yeah. Oh wow, yeah. interesting. Have you seen the show The Detectorists? Oh yes, I yeah. cried. I cried. That show <laughs> yeah. made me cry. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a moving show. It's a moving show. Uh, and I, one thing I always wanted to ask you, actually, because I was always curious about what happened. Uh, what did the Pixies do in that hiatus period of time? And you went into the world of magic, which is, yes. you know, not the most expected thing for uh, somebody with your career as a drummer to do. I'd love to hear just a little bit about that, how that came about. Um, yeah, I mean, if you told me early on uh, I would be a magician later in life, I would have rolled on the floor laughing. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I had seen in the in the interim when we broke up, I went with a friend uh, to a magic convention, just happened to go. And I saw a magic trick that just blew me away. It wasn't like your granddad's, you know, a card trick or something like that. It was something that was just, just had an effect on me. And from that point, I bought every book, every video. I took classes. I joined a place called the Magic Castle. And I became a professional magician. And um, it's not the wisest career choice. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, because, I mean, you've heard of the starving musician. Yes. That that phrase is the dying magician. I mean, so wow. yeah. it's... <laughs> like, but um, it's something that I loved. And I, 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 I developed a stage show called The Scientific Phenomenalist. Um, uh, and I've taken that over, opened up for bands. I've done festivals and things with that. And now, you know, since the Pixies reunited in 2004, it's kind of fallen by the wayside where I do a stage show. I do more just social magic with people uh, around, or I do it. I've been doing a lot for the Pixie social media as well. Oh, so okay. That, that's, Interesting. Uh, kept me busy. Yeah. It's funny magic. It's not the uh, sort of job that parents traditionally push their children into for job security. So that's yeah. an interesting one. Yes, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny thing, as I was saying, you know, I mean, I was an electrical engineer. That was my, that was my, that was my forte. And uh, I joined the Pixies in my senior year and we were playing and I worked probably about a half a year at a, at a real job, uh, electrical job, electronics. And uh, the Pixies took off. I said goodbye to that job. And I did the Pixies and my parents were kind of like, oh, and I mean, they were only happy when they saw me on TV. That's when they realized, oh, maybe something, maybe they are doing something. (laughs) Yeah, I can imagine. But but even though, despite all that, it was like, my mom still thinks you should have been a doctor. (laughs) So it's, you you can't win. (laughs) No, that's right. And uh, I absolutely have to ask you about uh, some uh, Come On Pilgrim, Surf of Roses stuff because those uh, both those, well, EP and album had a massive impact on me a long time ago now. Um, but I want to start with uh, Come On Pilgrim because that was uh, originally based on a bunch of demos. I believe you didn't re-record your first demo. I think the Purple Tape, it's called. Um, yes. That was just remixed uh, a little bit. Yes. And you wrote a, co-wrote a song on that, Levitate Me. And I think, you know, there's a few things I could ask you about that, but you did write Levitate Me, which is such an amazing song. It's one of my favorite Pixies tunes. I'm just curious. I had a hand in it. Yeah, you had a hand in it, yeah. And I'm just curious why that didn't continue, why you didn't co-write anything uh, beyond Levitate Me. 
Charles or Black Francis is much better than I. Than yeah. I so yeah. <laughs> he just left it at that. Yeah, yeah. I heard. I heard yeah. he's quite talented. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have nothing to complain at. So let him. Yeah, he can have it. So very nice. Very nice. And uh, in terms of Surfer Rosa, that album uh, is often talked about in terms of the production and the drum sound uh, is often talked about, and people try to replicate that drum sound. I'm just curious uh, about anything that Steve Albini did at the time with you to that was different than other ways you recorded drums or anything interesting you'd like sure. to share with us. Yeah, Gavin, the two, the two things that I remember, especially mm-hmm. on Surfer Rosa, I mean, that was our first time in like a a real studio after Come On Pilgrim, which was in a, I mean, it was in, it, it, was, it was called Apache, Fort Apache, which uh, was a nice studio as well. But uh, the studio we were jumping up to now, I think 18 track or 16 track. And what Steve did, the two things that I can attribute as far as sound the drums uh there's a thing called a pzm mic it's called a, it's like a field mic it's yeah. a it's a square plate with a mic that's embedded sideways and he just put it on the roof on the wall taped it to the wall in the studio at a distance and if you turn that up that gives the ambience or the room sound and that's a lot of what the drums are it's like a natural room sound rather than the close miking on the drums so that gave it that kind of that ambience yeah. uh the second thing was he gave, uh, I think, Joe and Charles metal picks. Not plastic, but metal picks. Oh, okay. Which, I don't know if they used it primarily, but that was another thing that was a, kind of gave a maybe a sound to it. But those are the two things that I can attribute to people talking about Serperos or the, the way that it sounds. Interesting, yeah. How did you actually end up working with Steve Albini in the first place? How did that meeting come about? It was a suggestion from Ivo Watts Russell, who was uh, from 4AD, uh, our record company in England. Um, we got signed initially, and we used Come On Pilgrim, which beca- which was the demo tape, which became that. And then when it came to do a follow-up, our first real a- effort, you know, other than that, that we did ourselves, uh, hit, that was his suggestion with Steve Albini. Mm, nice. Um, and just have a couple more questions, if you don't mind. I know we have a little bit of a sure. limit of time, but uh, kind of curious because the Pixies have been together longer now post hiatus than they were pre hiatus, uh, and you've been with them the the whole way through. So I'm kind of curious: do you, uh, has your role or how you approach things changed over time with the with the band? No, I wouldn't say. I'm still doing the uh, still same drumming. Um, I mean, it's surreal. I mean that the the, the, the fact when we were when we reunited and we're doing i think at the point of seven years yeah it became it was weird because again you were, you were saying we had we had been together seven years in the beginning before we broke up and now we're continuing on we're 2020 now and it wasn't until 2011 where we started doing new material uh indie cindy and stuff like that it hasn't changed much other than i think that our 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 skill as, as playing um we finally it's taken a while, but we just do a show now, which is we don't talk to the audience, and it's not that we're being antisocial or anything. We just bang. We come out, we do one song after another, bang, 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 bang. And now we do it. We've done it for the last couple of years. I would uh, avoid uh, COVID, but um, we don't have a set list. We um, we just we tell our our sound man what the first song is, and that's it. And so the sound guy and the lighting guy are like, oh, yeah, yeah. they don't know what's coming. But um, it's something that we've developed. We have, uh, we we can talk to each other and signal and we know how songs go into other. And it makes it much more fun and you can kind of play the play the audience. I mean, I don't mean to say it like you're, you're, you're working them, but it's... it's That's okay. Like- <laughs> it's, a, it, it, it's, a, it's a fun, it's, a, it's much more fun to do because it's it's a, it's a shtick now that we mm-hmm. have, you know, <laughs> we call it, and we're we're good at it. You know? It's just it's it's it makes it interesting rather than me playing and looking down and seeing what's next. It's 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 a lot better to just to do it on the spot. So. Yeah, absolutely. I guess that keeps it exciting, no matter how many times you, you play. Yeah. Um, and I know we're just at time, David. Uh, so just wanted to thank you so much for uh, giving us fifteen minutes today. It was a real pleasure uh, talking to you, and I can't wait to see you play in uh, in December. Oh, my pleasure. And thank you, Gavin. I do appreciate it so much. Excellent. Have a wonderful night. And thanks again. All right. Thank you. Take care.